Run in the depths Trying to escape From this love The hurt me so Hi, my name is Angelica Rapaci. I'm a junior at USF studying elementary education and I'm a friend of Me Sands. Thank you so much for accepting this interview, Angelica. Of course. So, to start right off the bat, how familiar are you with the deaf and hard of hearing world? I really wasn't familiar at all with it until I met you. I had never met a person who was hard of hearing or deaf before you came into my life. So that was, that was really all my experience was. Now I feel like I'm a lot more familiar ever since I've been friends with you and have attended various workshops and informed myself in different ways. I can question when first meeting people who have a hearing disability. What was an assumption you made? Mm. Well, one assumption that I did make when I first met you was that you knew um, how to sign ASL. And that turned out not to be true. Turns out that not everybody in the hard of hearing or deaf community knows how to sign ASL. That's interesting. After finding out that someone had a hearing disability, what did you think? I didn't really think anything about it. I guess I was just kind of curious to know if maybe you were born with it or if it had developed over time or, or how that process worked. If anybody else in your family was hard of hearing or deaf, what kind of challenges you encountered in your life. These are some of the questions that come from like me being curious and wanting to learn more about about someone in a community that I have had not been exposed to before meeting you. What is your experience with people who have a hearing disability? Well, like I said, my only real experience is with you, but that has been really positive for as long as I can remember. I don't think it, it's ever been a challenge. I guess I'm just more of aware of the fact that I have to speak louder when I'm around you. I have to make sure that you can see my lips when I'm talking, or if I'm in the car, you have to sit in the front seat and I have to turn the speakers up a little bit louder than usual. Now, even I feel like I'm more aware of it, even when you're not around, like if I'm watching a TikTok, I, I wonder if the closed captionings are available because if they aren't, then I think to myself, what about a, a person who's hard of hearing or deaf? How would they be able to interact with this video? So I feel like it's making me a lot more aware and a lot more empathetic to different life experiences that I wouldn't have otherwise thought of. I love that response. And the final question is, what are some things you learned about communication and how important it is for someone who is hard of hearing? Well, that ties a lot to my answer to the previous question is that communication is obviously so important and it's especially important that it's an equitable thing and that it's accessible to people who are hard of hearing or deaf. Um, like I know for a fact that if I ever had any students in my class, I would be talking with the parents, I would make sure that I understand their IEP, which is an individualized education plan for those who aren't familiar. I would make sure that I have all the accommodations necessary for them in, to support their learning in whatever way. That's in the context of education, but outside of my personal life, I feel like just communication in, in any form is, is so critical to make sure that it's accessible for all people. If you have something that's audio or visual, make sure that there's closed captioning or even like a typed out transcript, some way that people can access the content of the video so that they are not excluded from that. Well, I think just hearing from your experiences, from your life experience, about how tough it can be sometimes when people don't take that into consideration and don't make things accessible for you. It, it breaks my heart because it's just unfair. I work really hard to make sure that anything that I do is accessible for people in all types of communities. And, and I wanna make sure that I don't ever cause anybody the feelings that you've experienced about being excluded or, you know, for whatever reason, but especially because of your disability. That is all the question that I have. Thank you so much again. This is very beneficial, so. You're so welcome, again, anytime. Thank you. <laughs> My name is Rada and I am a third year studio art student and I am Misan's friend. Thank you so much for doing this interview. Let's just get right into it. So the first question I have for you is how familiar are you with the deaf and hard of hearing world? Not very familiar. What I've learned of 
deaf and hard of hearing world is basically learning about Helen Keller in the fifth grade and other than that not much exposure. Second question is when first meeting people who have a hearing disability what was an assumption you made? I typically try not to make any assumptions no matter whom I'm meeting. I try to observe what they do and how they act in order to act accordingly. Maybe, for example, I notice someone is paying closer attention to some things and not others. Like, maybe I try to accommodate for that. Like, um, like I notice sometimes you, like, focusing, like, down here. So I try to enunciate and, you know, kind of small adjustments like that. After finding out that someone has a hearing disability, what did you think? I I don't know honestly. It probably explained like some behaviors or like the way people act. Either you acting towards the world or the world act reacting towards you. Try to again act accordingly and respond as properly as I can. What is your experience with people who have a hearing disability? They're just people. They have their own struggles. They're they're working on things just like any other person. Uh, whether it be it they are hard of hearing or not. So I just like try to make it less troublesome or like less of a struggle. I have like I noticed that it's easier to enunciate and to talk a little clearer and maybe a little louder mm. in order to just so you can understand what I'm saying easier. And the last question, what are some things you learned about communication? and how important it is for someone who is hard of hearing. For communication, I I learned that I kind of have to be like not absolute, but I have to be sure like what I'm saying and how I'm saying it in order to properly convey what I'm trying to say without with as little miscommunication as possible. That is all the questions that I thank have. You. So thank you so much for doing this interview again and being a part of something that matters so much. I'm happy to be a part of it. Say bye to this beautiful angel. Bye guys. Hello everyone. My name is Jordan Foltz. I'm a senior here at the University of South Florida. I'm an entrepreneurship and innovation major at the College of Business. And I know relationship I know Misan through the National Society of leadership and success. Thank you so much for accepting this interview. Uh, now jumping right in, first question is how familiar are you with the deaf and hard of hearing world? Thank you for inviting me. I have somewhat familiarity with the deaf and hard of hearing culture. I have taken American Sign Language 1 at my high school in Jacksonville and was able to also explore Florida School for the Deaf and Blind on a, a one day trip. And you when first meeting people who have a hearing disability, what was an assumption you made? One assumption that I made for someone who had a hearing disability, I think was their level of communication. I, for some reason, made an assumption that they could communicate like less than someone who could speak, which is very inaccurate because people who can use American Sign Language and have the opportunity to communicate how they can do an amazing job creating ideas and sentences and communicating with friends and family and peers. After finding out that someone has a hearing disability, what did you think? Be really honest and happy. When I met people with hearing disabilities, I thought I had to treat them more with kid gloves because I was someone who could speak and they couldn't. But in fact, the, what I learned was they really want to be treated the same. They're just people and I'm just a person. If we have a brain, we can all communicate. And so just because I use my ears more and they are able to use sight more to communicate, I just had to kind of relearn what my idea of communication was to be able to hear more about this community, which is an awesome community. What is your experience with people who have a hearing disability? Yeah, my experiences have generally all been really positive. Going to FSDB was a really fun experience. There was also events at my mall where a couple times per month people from the 
hard of hearing and deaf community would come out and kind of speak to the students and just talk to us. And so it was really, I guess, insightful to hear about people in their lives and watch how expressive they are with their, their communicating, with their signs. They would explain what their sign names were. And it was really cool to just immerse yourself in the culture and just be silent and turn off your ears and be more in tune with watching sights and gestures of deaf and hard of hearing culture. And finally, what are some things you learned about communication and how important it is for someone who is hard of hearing? The biggest takeaway that I've learned is respect. Um, it's definitely just a different way of life. And so, um, Communicating with ASL just requires being, again, in tune more with your environment because getting people's attention with hand gestures um, can only be seen through sight. So it, it's changing um, just the way we communicate and being respectful towards how people need to communicate is a really, a really big thing. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hello, everybody. So you actually saw, so you saw the interview that I did of three good friends of mine, and I want to thank them very, very much. Now I am going to sit here and talk about why USF should pay more attention to the deaf and hard of hearing community, more on the hard of hearing community than the deaf, but are all as one so it's it's both actually because our history are entwined together so i'm actually reading off of my phone for reference so that i don't miss out on any detail so a little bit about the history so the activism of the deaf and hard of hearing community we have a strong strong history of activism twice actually in at the Gallaudet University students were involved in a protest from the 1880s and then early again in the 2000s so the first movement was actually called deaf president now which resulted in the selection of the first deaf president at Gallaudet University and then the the second protest was Unity for Gallaudet, which where students rose up against an unpopular choice for the president and brought attention to academic issues at Gallaudet. The economic survival in the deaf and hard of hearing community. So economic survival in the deaf and hard of hearing community had been fraught with challenges throughout history. So for an example, in the Great Depression of the 1930s, we were faced with the same challenges as hearing people, but even more. So more than what hearing people were going through. Those who lived at the time may remember deaf peddlers. So those who were deaf or hard of hearing would offer people an alphabet card in exchange of money. When we talk about deaf education, keep in mind that the history of education has been so, so tough. We go back to the 19th century of deaf education. The greatest impact in the negative sense came from the Second Internal Nation Congress on Education of the Deaf in Milan, Italy at the 1880s. So this was the Conference of Deaf Educators where they were, a resolution was passed banning sign language. So if you don't know, sign language is very, very important in the deaf and hard of hearing community. We use it to express ourselves. It's also a language, so it's where we use our hand. So imagine sign language being banned, meaning you're not allowed to use your hands for communication. So there was no other way to communicate. Technologies such as phone devices did not exist. Just imagine for a moment how hard it was for people who were deaf and hard of hearing but couldn't even use American Sign Language from the 1880s. So then the only countries at the time that were opposed to banning were the United States and Great Britain. But the segregation school for the deaf was also challenging just as public schools were segregated. Black deaf students could not attend classes with white deaf students even in the same school. So unfortunately I need to touch up on this disturbing moment in the deaf history, deafness was often mistaken for mental retardation and people were often initialized with disastrous consequences. 
Plus being deaf during the Holocaust was often a death sentence, even if you are not Jewish. So the bottom line is that the deaf history and heritage are rich and diverse. From technology to education to media and more, progress in reducing the impact of deafness on individuals around the world. While we still have a long way to go, which we do and I will explain why we have a long way to go. Continued advances in greater understanding of deaf and hard of hearing by the public are making a difference in so many ways. I actually want to go ahead and make note that I will be talking about what is USF not doing that they should do more of. I want to explain how it would be good for the general public so people in USF how would it be good for them and I want to talk about personal experience as someone who is hard of hearing. What USF is not doing, they offer deaf studies and American Sign Language, but that's not enough. Often, and this goes hand in hand with my second prompt on explaining why this would be good for the general public, I feel like USF needs to really acknowledge that there are people who have severe hearing loss, who are deaf, who are hard of hearing, although we have accommodations for us. I feel like USF is not doing what they need to do to be like, hey, we have these group of people. We need more than just deaf studies and American Sign Language classes. So I feel like USF should be opening other classes. For an example, I think they should open a class on communication. How do you communicate with somebody who is deaf? I mean, obviously you use American Sign Language, but also what is important in communication? Also, how do you communicate with somebody who is hard of hearing? You may not know their level range of hearing loss, but to communicate with them is, for example, on this website that I'm referencing to, communication tip for talking to people with hearing loss. I will also leave a link to it down below because I think this is an amazing tip to talk to somebody that you may know who has a hearing loss or you may want to talk to them but you're not sure how. The first thing that they say off of this website is make sure the room has enough lightning. So oftentimes we rely on lip reading, facial expression, and body language and gestures so that we understand what you're saying. Yes, I read lips. Me, I read lips. So I really need the room, the area, the location to be well lit so that I can see what the other person is trying to say when they're talking to me. Pick a place that has minimum background noise. I cannot stress this enough. Honestly, universities are loud. USF is loud and especially on Wednesdays where it's bulls market and the music is blasting in the background. It is so, so loud. You can't really do anything about it, but maybe if the other person knows American Sign Language, you could talk using your hands using American Sign Language. But other than that, I would rely heavily on lip reading, especially when it comes to places that have loud noises. Sometimes you can't even help that you go into a loud noise. So like, for an example, you, let's say you're going out with your friend. You go into a restaurant and you think that at this certain hour, the restaurant won't be that loud. But then it is loud and they have the TV on, they have music in the background. It's a loud environment. Sometimes it's really hard to pick a place where it doesn't have a lot of background noise, but places such as the park, sometimes some malls are like so empty that it's not that loud. But, you know, just try to keep in mind when you make plans with somebody who's hard of hearing or you want to be around them, just make sure it's in an environment where it's not that loud and they can hear you. Make sure the area is well lit. Make sure it's not in a very loud environment. Part of hearing communication tips. Now this is very interesting and maybe I will nitpick here and there about my personal experiences blending in. Make sure you don't cover your mouth. Don't talk with yawning or chewing gum. Like make sure your mouth is visible at all times when you talk to somebody who's hard of hearing. We really need to see your mouth. Again, we rely heavily on lip reading, so we need to see your mouth at all times. Make sure you don't yawn, and if you do yawn while talking, make sure you pause, yawn, and then talk. 
because that will make it easier for us. Knowing that you need to yawn, but we don't want to miss out on what you're saying. Don't speak from another room or when your back is turned to the person. Do not, under any circumstance, shout. As a hard of hearing person myself, I hate it when people shout at me. It's not a very positive energy. It's just making it seem like you're mad at us or we did something wrong that you don't like. But making sure your back isn't turned is very important because again, most of us rely on hard of hearing. I can't speak for everyone in the hard of hearing community, but I can't speak for myself when I say that if your back is turned, I mean, there's a 95% chance I may not understand you. Make sure your back is not turned. Make sure you do not yawn or there's anything in your mouth. Make sure we can read your lips. Do not speak from another room. I've had people where they would be in the kitchen and I'm in my bedroom. Don't talk to me unless you have a really loud voice and you can like shout, which is another instance of when it comes to shouting, if you're trying to call my name and I'm in a different room, then do it in a nice shouting manner. Don't do it in a manner where it's like you're yelling, screaming. Like, I know it can be hard, but try to be aware of that because we oftentimes get embarrassed. I get embarrassed when somebody yells my name in public. Like, I get embarrassed, but if it's at home, try to minimize the shouting. When you want to call them, try to find where they are instead of shouting. That's another good tip. Try to find where they are. Like, if you think they're in the bedroom, go find them in the bedroom. If you think they are in the living room, go in the living room and be like, Hey, I need you for this, or whatever it is you want to tell them. But for the love of God, do not shout. If the person with hearing loss hears better in one ear, take note of that and try to speak more toward the right or left side. So for me, I know I hear better with my cochlear implant, which is in my right ear. My hearing aid is in my left. I rely on both of my ears, both of my implant and my hearing aid, but I hear way much better in my right ear. So if, for an example, we're walking at your side, you're talking and you're on my left side. There's a chance I may not be even hearing what you say because, hey, we're walking. We need to pay attention on the road and everything. B, I can't read your lips. Again, we need to pay attention. But I can always just turn my head and read your lips. Try to be on my right side. So I know for me, I had cases where I had to swap with the person. I would be like, okay, excuse me. I have a hard of hearing. I need to be on the right side so I can hear you better. And that... It's amazing. Advocate for yourself. That is another tip. That is another tip. Like literally, allow the chance for hard of hearing people, for deaf people to advocate for themselves. You do not need to be advocating for I can advocate for myself. If I tell you from the start that I have a hard of hearing disability, then I'm going to tell you. But keep it in mind that it's your responsibility to remember that I have a hard of hearing disability. I can't keep telling you. I will tell you from the start as soon as we meet. I need to see your lips at all times. Sit or stand close to the person with hearing loss, but not so close that he or she can't easily switch focus between maintaining eye contact and speech reading. This is actually when you're sitting like at a table. For an example, for my club meeting, normally we sit at the very long table. I sit over here and then like the president over here, vice president, other e-board members. So it's like they're all sitting surrounding me. So it's like I'm sitting in a way where I can try to listen to everybody and everybody around me. So I'm accommodating and I'm like looking over like this or like this when I need to, you know, if I don't hear anything, I do that. They are staying close to the person with hearing loss. That is very, very important. But if you have meetings, you need to sit in an area where you can just sit there and make sure that they can see you. Very important during meetings, especially I feel like they need to see you read your lips. They need to understand what you're saying. Yes, so before starting a conversation, say the person's name so you can get his or her attention. But if that does not work, I suggest you wave or gent tap right on their shoulders. I've had people who tapped on my shoulders just like, that is making me feel like you're upset with me. I do not suggest aggressively tapping on somebody's shoulders. I suggest you try to be like, like this, like that. And they said wave. Oh, if you're in front of them and they may not see you or maybe, I don't know, they're daydreaming. Just like wave like that so that they can see you. Pay attention to the listener's cues. So like people with hearing loss sometimes feel embarrassed or get tired of asking others to repeat themselves or clarify. If the person looks a bit puzzled, find a tactful way to ask if he or she understood you. I struggle with this. I 
I'm so trying to learn how to advocate for myself and I actually I need like I ask people if they can repeat themselves like I've lately been asking my friends can you please repeat yourself or I ask my family can you please repeat yourself or I ask even my professors in class and I know some people don't like that but I need to understand what's going on in class so I'm like can you please repeat yourself I actually got a little bit better but I feel like if I don't catch it the second time and I have to ask for a third time and if I don't catch it the third time and I have to ask for a fourth time I feel I get embarrassed because it's not that I don't want to hear it's just that due to the environment that you may be and you cannot hear certain things and that's okay I get embarrassed honestly because we want to hear we want to hear everything that you guys are hearing and we can't unfortunately and so we get a little bit embarrassed having to ask the same thing over and over but it's something that I'm working on and you know right now I am very very blessed to be able to ask people that I know would be comfortable repeating because there are instances in the past where for an example you're on your phone, right? You ask them something and they don't really hear it. And you ask them for clarification and they get irritated. They're like, oh, why did you say that? And then you're like, excuse me, can you say it again? They're like, oh, why did you say that? Like, they would do it like that. And oftentimes, that really makes us feel embarrassed. Like, we should not be asking. Giving the attitude of the person that you're talking to when they do that to you is giving do not talk to us we're annoyed at you like why are you asking me this so try to be a little bit more gentle when they ask for clarification even if it's on the third or fourth try try to be gentle and patient patience is key with us i swear it's all we need just a little bit of patience or everything any situation in the group setting make sure to avoid speaking over each other i cannot stress this enough i have a habit of talking over people it's a bad habit honestly working on it gotten slightly better but i'm still trying to not talk over people again my club meeting sometimes people have an idea that pops in their head while someone else is talking so while that one person is talking the other person is like oh hey how about this and then i can't even hear what's going on try not to do that if you're in a group setting with someone who's hard of hearing try not to talk to over other people try not to do it because it really frustrates us and we can't keep following the conversation like two at a time don't talk about a person with hearing loss as if he or she isn't there instead talk directly to that person and do your best to use the above tact i seriously cannot stress this enough we yes i understand we have a hard of hearing disability we require just patience as i mentioned earlier just patience and you know don't give up on us we'll get there eventually but we just need a little bit of patience and you know it really doesn't make us feel better if you talk about us while we're right there like literally just look at us make sure we can see your body language your mouth make sure that there's nothing in your mouth make sure it's in a well lit room make sure that you know the environment not too noisy and if it is noisy try to find a way to stick closer to that person try to do things that you feel like you want others to do if you had a hard of hearing i know for me i wish some people would sit closer to me i wish some people would a little bit raise their voice so that i can understand what they're saying we still do things like regular people we go to school we read we write we learn languages we you know like we're so normal people just that our hearing gets in the way just a little bit but with proper accommodation then it's really really important i actually want to share a personal story earlier this semester i did an event for a club and it was a i believe the student organization fair where you actually got to go and it was like in the USF ballroom is so big and nice bigger than this room honestly and there's like there was over 150 different plus student organizations they had loud music and unfortunately that day I was overstimulated by the loud music so it was me the president and the vice president now the vice president tried his best to accommodate me noticing that you know I was a little bit quieter than usual tried to talk to me noise was really really loud i believe i had an ear infection during that time which did not help whatsoever but i think it was like i believe it was in the earlier stages of the ear infection so it just didn't help i was overstimulated to an extent but it was the way that he tried to make me comfortable 
to get me to talk, feed mouth, read it body language, you know, like those basic stuff and that really helped me because it made me feel like I was able to understand what he was asking me and we were able to have a conversation back and forth and you know those are the things that really count it's, it stays with us it stays with us as people so those are like tips and tricks that help I think two separate so to go back to like classes that USF should offer them, I think it would be a good idea to have the deaf communication class and a hard of hearing communication class. That way that people who are interested but they don't really know how to communicate with people who are hard of hearing, how to communicate with deaf people. They could take this class and I know like one semester should be enough because not a lot of information but like a lot of practice goes a long way. Having those classes would be so so important. Honestly if I could I would fit this like communication tips and tricks into this video but it would be a very long video and I don't think anybody would stay around for an hour and a half just for communication. But because a project, I wanted to make sure at least I gave you a little bit of the tips and tricks for hard of hearing. I, again, I will leave the link to the website down below in the description box so you guys can click on it and read it yourselves if you are interested. So it would be good for the students that take the class. Why? Because then they go back out into the real world and no matter who it is that has a hard of hearing, like your relatives, your spouse, your family, your friends, you know, your boss, you could impress them. And and you can acknowledge the fact that they are deaf or they have a hard of hearing disability and that it helps them feel like they can relax and be themselves. So yeah, I think this can be very beneficial for USF students. I think USF really need to step up on their game a little bit and they need to acknowledge that there are people who have deaf and hard of hearing and that people in general don't even know how to interact because they've never been exposed to the community or they have never know how to interact. So I think this is what USF should do and be more focused and aware of what's going on within the university. This was a little bit molded together with the experience, why people should take classes like this, what USF needs to do. And I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope you learned something new. And I hope you really like the interviews. I love interviewing them as much as you love watching them. So thank you so, so much for watching my video. And I will see you in my next one. Bye. Oh, but I